At what level do you think Joey Bosa is playing right now when you watch video and you see kind of the attention that he garners from the opponent? You know, I think he's the best player in the nation. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I said one of the best, but I really think he's the best player in the nation. A guy that attracts triple teams on plays, double teams on every play, and that you just have, have to account for in every play that you have on offense. How much better does his presence make everybody else on defense? The fact that, like, for example, second half, Illinois, there were a couple of cases they, they triple teams, they had, a, they had a blocking back and two, two linemen on him. Yeah. How much opportunity does he create for everybody else? Just obviously, numbers wise, you're in a pretty good situation there. Yeah, uh, they always try to slide the protection towards him. So other guys like on the D-line, such as Tommy, who just came back last week, Dolphins Washington, uh, Taquan Lewis, Sam Hubbard, Jalen Holmes, they come in the game, and they know that they're sliding protection towards Joey. So uh, you just have to make plays on the other side of the line. And uh, I just think Joey has did a great job, too, still impacting the game, even though he's been accounted for in every play. It creates situations of opportunity for you, too, though, right? We were just talking to him about that. I mean. It is there also a feeling, obviously when you play middle linebackers, a feeling of responsibility, but does it give you a, a better chance of making your play when you've got guys like that in front of you? Right yeah, on? I mean, everybody that is just named uh, on the D-line does a great job of keeping the, keeping the linemen off the linebackers. Uh, you know, me and Josh and Darren, uh, we just flow out there and just go hit our gaps. And we just know that we don't have to worry about a guard or a tackle coming up to climb on us. Uh, we have such a great D-line that requires double teams and uh, requires different schemes to uh, keep them out of the backfield on every play, so we know that we're not accounted for on some plays. This is a cliche uh, question, but are, is this the kind of game, for example, you came to Ohio State to play in? I mean, I mean, you know, it's going to be a physical. They're probably going to try to come after you guys a little bit, at least initially. Is is this one of the things that was an attraction to you from the standpoint of uh, playing in a game like this? Uh, you know. Uh, Throughout the year, you, you know, we've been watching Michigan State, uh, yeah. see, seeing how they've been progressing as a team and also watching our pro progression uh, throughout the Big Ten because, you know, our conference as a whole has really stepped their level of game up these last couple of years. Uh, you know, Iowa's on the other side of the conference, Michigan, uh, Michigan State. I mean, all across the conference, each team is uh, definitely getting better. But uh, I think, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to this game. It's definitely one of the games that I've – really been looking forward to even when I was a recruit. So, uh, yeah. And, and why? I mean, just because the physical nature of it, just because of the high, the high elite level of the uh, competition? What, 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 just, what just gets your attention? Yeah, I think the elite level of competition and the hype leading up to the game, it just brings the best out of the players. You know, uh, in the shoe, man, you either, you either crumble under pressure or you, or you thrive. So I think in this environment, playing against Michigan State at 3.30, I think, yeah, uh, it's a big stage for some guys to make plays, and even for guys who don't really have a big name to make some great plays on national television. Late, late November, you're sitting there as a, as a as a youngster in Georgia, watching a I don't, a Big Ten football game. Did, was that the attraction to the weather? The, the I mean the the cool weather, the physical. You know what I mean? Did 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 you, did you at one time imagine yourself in that kind of environment? Uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't get hot in Georgia till later, does it? I mean, I mean, it's, it's been cold recently, yeah. but uh, you know what I'm yeah, but uh, I mean, not really. The cold weather really didn't attract me here. It's it's the people, yeah. you know. It's all. It's, well, I knew what the cold <laughs> weather. I'm just talking about the fall, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it was really the people, man. You know, the people around here make it a great place to be, and uh, like I said, the level of competition, like just just knowing that at the end of the season you're gonna play. Well, throughout the season, you're going to play good competition, but at the end of the season during November, you're playing for championships. Rick Juan, uh, what's your thoughts on their running game and LJ Scott in particular? Uh, you know, I'm about to go in and watch film right after this on the game. But, uh, you know, they have a dominant and physical offensive line with a great quarterback who leads the offense and uh, great physical running backs with some uh, pretty nifty wide receivers out there. I know we just have to do a good job of uh, – improving our level of play each week like we've been doing the last couple of weeks because we want to be playing our best football at the end of the season. Rico, when you hear the starting, their starting quarterback, no matter who it was, didn't play last week in the second half because of a shoulder injury, does that make you thinking, I mean, how, how do you put that in, compartmentalize that, knowing he might have a little bit of a, you know, a dinged wing there, but yet he might still be on point? You know, I mean, as you go into the game, does it, does it cloud kind of your preparation a little bit as you look forward to a game and what to expect? No, nah, I think you just have to put it in perspective as a football player because 
you know, we always play with injuries, uh, nicked up or dinged up. You know, he's a great player, uh, one of the top NFL prospects for next year. And uh, I have respect for him because I played him against him last year where he was a great competitor. But I know that he's going to bring his competitive nature and he's going to have his team ready to go when they come to the shoot. <laughs> You guys talk all year about trying to treat every game the same, but then when you get to a big one like this one, is there a different energy or a different vibe from earlier in the season? Uh, I just think the, the emotions is the biggest part about this game. You have to c control your emotions. Just like the first game of the season, uh, you're so amped up and ready to go that you have to, once the first couple plays go out, now you got to get back to playing your base football and uh, control the chaos that's going on around you. But uh, leading up to this game, you just have to control your emotions and stick to your routine and the things that you did throughout throughout the season and weekly that helped you uh, be prepared for Saturday. Is the best cure for that just getting more experience in games like this? Yeah, I mean, the more experienced players know their routine and know uh, how to handle this environment. Was your Sunday routine any different, though? I mean, because it would seem that you'd want to turn the page very quickly to start getting ready for a game like this. Uh, you know, Coach Fick did, did a good job of uh, recapping Illinois game. Uh, they were a pretty good team. But uh, yeah, we did move on and watch some of the Michigan State uh, game ahead of time. And uh, we're about to go in there and break it down right now some more. So uh, yeah, I mean, it, you have to intensify your level of preparation based on who you're playing, but uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> How much do you want to win this game for your seniors the last time we had? You know, I got a senior right beside me, uh, Joshua Perry, you know. I mean, there's also seniors throughout the team that I really want to win this for, but you know, Josh, who's did great things throughout this community, uh, great things for this program. Coming here, he was here when it was at rock bottom when they went uh, six and seven, I think, or whatnot. But uh, I just want to leave him out on a good note, like we did last year with Curtis Grant. How has he helped you? Uh, I think Joshua has helped me off the field more than more than I can say on the field because just me becoming a better person. Uh, anytime he goes out and does a community outreach or something like that, he always texts me or calls me and asks me do I want to go. And uh, I think that over the last two years or so has really helped me become a better person off the field and uh, helped me to be able to make plays on the field also. Were you reluctant to do that to begin with or were, were, were you always sort of like bent in that direction of doing that community outreach kind of thing? Yeah, I've always wanted to, I mean, been doing community outreach. Uh, yeah, since I was in high school, but you know, when you come to a different school, you have new people around you. He just introduced me to some new people that I really didn't know and some new uh, opportunities out there, even when he leaves, that I can continue What's going on. Uh, the we've been doing outreaches at churches. He's been he's been to Costa Rica, not Costa Rica. Yeah, yeah Costa Rica. Costa Rica last year, and uh, I think I've been nominated to go to. Uh, Jamaica this year, so sort of sort of uh, souls for shoot for souls yeah. thing, but uh, I I think it's a great opportunity. I think I'm gonna take that opportunity. Yeah. Hey, great, Quan. I know you guys are big on one game at a time and, and all that good stuff. But when you whether it was during the season or when the schedule first came out and you saw Michigan State, Michigan potentially the Big Ten title game, did this potential three game stretch kind of stand out to you? Uh, you know. To every fan and every player on our team, yeah, it stands out. But you, if you don't handle your business throughout the season, then the last two or three games don't really matter. Uh, you, yeah, you, look, you can look ahead to the uh, Big Ten championship game, but if you're going into week eight and you're uh, four and three or something like that, then it really doesn't matter. So we have to stay the course, like I said. How important are Eli and Gary on to your defense at corner? What you guys try to do with leaving them out? Kind of you, know, you know, Eli and uh, Gary on do a great job of locking down the number one receivers on the boundary and to the field. So, uh, I mean, that's just one less thing that we have to worry about. We know that if we go man covers that those receivers is gonna, are going to be taken out of the play uh, most of the time. But uh, they, their, level of comp their level of competitiveness really raises the competitiveness of the whole defense, and uh, they do a great job with it. Oh, go ahead. I asked you a while ago about you know about facing a physical team like Michigan State. But when you look at them, and when you've watched them a little bit this year, they're a very multiple attack, aren't they? How would you describe them on offense? You know, they got a quarterback that runs the show, really. Uh, Connor Cook. Yeah. Uh, has a great throwing arm. Has receivers that have great hands. Has some great targets at quarterback. I mean, not quarterback, tight end. Yeah. But uh, 
you know, they were very yeah. yeah. Very balanced offense. I think he has like a thousand yards receiving, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. But uh you know, they have some weapons on offense, man. We just gotta do what we gotta do to contain them. Can I asked you last week a couple more. What have y'all fixed in the run defense and you said basically build a wall? How many of you got back to that? Yeah. Uh is it everybody take care of their responsibility, et cetera. Uh do you do you see that now continuing? I mean, do you, do you think y'all put some really solid things in place? Yeah, I mean, we really put an emphasis on it after giving up some big runs. Uh, now that we've been giving up some big runs and we really progressed throughout the season, I think our, our defense, our rush defense, has really improved weekly. Weekly, but uh, we can get better. How big a deal does uh, Joey make it when he gets triple teamed? Now he doesn't really make a big deal out of it. Sometimes we don't even know until we watch film the next day. So he's a really guy that just goes to work out there. What's and, it like uh, watching that happen? Just seeing him battle sometimes two and three guys at once. Uh, on film, it looks amazing because he still is able to get through two or three guys. But I wish I could do something like that. <laughs> do they uh, send three scout guys at him during practice? No, nah, we usually just, just do two. base. Just base two. Yeah, just two. <laughs>